The greatest men we read about in the Holy Scriptures were servants of the Most High God. Now, there's a lot of things that I cannot do. There's a lot of things that I don't know about. But there is one thing that we can each do, and that is to serve God. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Apostle Paul tells young Timothy how he can be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Here we see that it's very important that we live our lives to please our master, the Lord Jesus Christ. But it takes preparation. And this word prepared is very interesting because it means fitted for a task, adaptable, usable. And the greatest way that I can explain this is with the use of a crescent wrench. A crescent wrench is designed for many purposes. It is very flexible and thus you can make it small and you can adjust it for any size of bolt that you need to loosen or to tighten. Or you can make this quite big. This is a very large crescent wrench. And for whatever purpose that I need it for, this crescent wrench is available for. It's meat for my use. Likewise, the Lord wants us to be like this crescent wrench placed in his hand available for whatever he wants to do with our lives. And it is not up to us to demand what kind of job we will do with our lives. And God may want you to do something that seems so insignificant, so small, and it's going to require humility. Or perhaps God is trying you in the small things to prepare you for a bigger task. But if we are going to be fully equipped to do whatever God wants us to do, we must be prepared. We must be adjusted or fitted for the task that God is preparing us. You see, anything important in life requires preparation. If you want to use your cell phone tomorrow, you're going to plug it in and charge it tonight. We make preparations for many things. Before we go to school or work, we make sure that we have our clothes that are matching and ironed and prepared so that we don't look goofy. And when it comes time for a wedding, we don't just throw things together at the last minute. There's much time to work out the details and prepare so that everything comes out just the way that we want it to. And when we look at Scripture, we see that God is a God of preparation. In fact, God was not in a hurry when He prepared His chosen vessels to use. We see that God took Moses out in the wilderness for 40 years to break him of his self-reliance and to bring him to a complete dependence upon God as his leader before God to use Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. We see that Noah prepared an ark for the saving of his house. We also see the Jews that took great pains to prepare themselves in performing the sacrifices and the priests who would wash themselves and make sure that the offering that they would sacrifice was just right. God is orderly and in the details. We find that John the Baptist prepared the way for the Messiah. Jesus told his disciples to make preparation for the Passover. The father of the prodigal son, if you remember, he prepared a fatted calf when his son had returned. The apostle Paul was prepared to preach the gospel and even die for the name of Christ. And Jesus comforted his disciples when he said that he was going to heaven to prepare a place for them. And it is most important that we take the words of admonishment from Amos to prepare to meet our God. When we look back on the life of William Carey, the great missionary to India, we see in his formative years how God was preparing him to be a servant overseas. You see, William Carey was a school teacher, and during his class, he would look over at the globe that was on his desk, and he would start weeping, and he would just start saying, they're lost, they're lost. And who was he talking about? Well, he had heard about the people in India who were without God and without hope. They were idolaters, and because he had learned about geography, he had learned about other cultures and other people, he learned that there was a great need. And God was preparing his heart and he was allowing God to use the circumstances in his life to fit him for the task that God would call him to. You may not know what God is leading you to do, but I assure you that he is unconsciously preparing you for a very specific work, a very important work. And that is greater than anything that you can accomplish for your own glory or for your namesake. And that is to declare the glory of God and lift up the name of Jesus Christ to those who've never heard. Dr. Viggo Olson, missionary doctor to Bangladesh, 
made this statement years ago. He said only one out of every 100 Christians has the youth, the health, and the Bible training to meet the qualifications to be a foreign missionary. I wonder how it is with you. Perhaps you're young. Perhaps you say, there's many things I want to do with my life. Maybe God is preparing you to serve Him and to bring the gospel to a group of people who have never heard. If God is, then you must allow Him to prepare you unto every good work. Mm -hmm.